Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true dad. welcome back to Fallout, a tale of two wastelands. Well, last time, we kicked off our brand new adventure here in Fallout 3 with the Lone Wanderer, though a couple of people did suggest, and I think it's a lovely idea, given that's a bit of a mouthful, how about, yes, we call her Wanda for short. That's a lovely name, and speaking of, uh, yes, some uh, small adjustments we do need to make, some people did very correctly point out, John... You're playing Fallout 3, so why isn't everything nice and green? And you know what? You're right. We are the Lone Wanderer from Vault 101. Things should be nice and green. And now they flipping are. Green Pip-Boy, green UI, much flipping better. That fixed up, obviously today we are kicking off with Megaton and uh, I love Megaton. It's one of my favourite Bethesda towns of all time just because it is so bloody dense. Like, square footage, this is not a big town, but there is so, so much going on in here, including a whole bunch of tucked away secret stuff we're gonna be looking at today. I'll be damned. Another newcomer. Name's Lucas Sims, town sheriff, and mayor too, when the need arises. I don't know why, but I like you, girl. Something tells me you're alright, so welcome to Megaton. Just holler if you need something. A lovely warm welcome to our first town there, and uh, yes indeed, pleasure to meet you. We're going to be nice to this guy, because uh, obviously, yes, we need to jump straight into our business as a typical Bethesda protagonist, which is uh, let's completely bloody ignore our main objective, uh, tracking down my father, boring as anything, and instead jump straight into every single side mission going. So, Lucas... My brand new friend, how about I have a look-see at that giant bomb in the center of town? I don't trust any of the locals to tinker with it. Besides, most people don't even realize it's still a threat. And hell, Cromwell and those crazies from the Church of Adam, they worship the damn thing. If you get the job done, there'll be 100 caps in it for you. And how about instead, oh blimey, yeah, in Fallout 3, speed checks are a bit on the, uh, hardcore side. Like, in New Vegas, speed checks are generally set to level where it's pretty easy to actually keep up with them. Like, it is not difficult if you just follow the intended path in New Vegas to be able to pass every speed check pretty easily. In Fallout 3, yeah, things were a bit more hardcore. Even with uh, Charisma 6 and speech tagged, uh, this is far from a certain thing. Though, uh, there is an extra reason for that, which is... Uh, Fallout 3 was the last Bethesda game that characters objected to the fact that you are holding a gun and pointing it straight at them while having a lovely conversation. After this, nobody cared anymore. Everyone was completely chill with you just pointing a pistol straight at their chest, not a problem. But yes, in this game, it does matter. Though, I couldn't tell you just off the top of my head precisely what the difference is going to be. The calculation is actually pretty complicated. It involves charisma, speech skill, whether you've got a gun out or not. There's even a hidden disposition system. Nowhere near as prominent as in Oblivion, say, but there is one going on in the background. So I'm going to find out right now just how much it impacts that percentage if I put my gun away before we start this conversation. Conversation. There we go, gun away, up from 18 to 20%. So you've just got a slightly better chance, though even so, yes, we are very unlikely to get this done. Still, I'll roll the dice, why not? That's pretty steep. Uh, fine. Uh, do it and you'll get your money. Don't screw up, though, or we'll all regret it. Okay, that's pretty bloody nice, actually. You know what? I'll flip and take it, and uh, I could ask after my dad, uh, but no, no, no. Screw that noise. Uh, we don't need that yet, all right? That's very low on my list of things to do. Right, that done straight down the road, and this could be the easiest money I've ever made in a Fallout game, because I'm pretty sure, yes, my explosives is actually good enough to just do this right now. I think it's either 25 or 30, and I'm good for either. So, uh, don't worry about that. We don't want to be doing that nonsense just yet. Instead, of course, there's another option. If I just, you know, make my way up the hill towards Moriarty's saloon. And there we go in the bar. One guy waving me over, though. Fun fact, he's only here because of the version of the game I'm playing. 
if you play the Japanese version of Fallout 3, Mr. Burke isn't present, because of course, he provides you with uh, the alternative solution of blowing up Megaton, an option that was simply eliminated from the Japanese release by removing Mr. Burke due to, uh, well, understandable cultural sensitivities uh, about nuking an urban centaur. My, my. Just when I'd all but given up hope. My dear girl, I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. I am Mr. Burke. And you, well, you are not a resident of this putrescent cesspool. That makes you a rather valuable individual. And yes indeed, apparently I find myself enthralled, but you know what? Let's say it, because me and him, we're playing a bit of a game right now. Finally, someone with a modicum of civility and common sense. I represent certain interests, and those interests view this town, this megaton, as a blight on a burgeoning urban landscape. You have no connections here, no interest in this cesspool's affairs or fate. You could assist us in erasing this little accident off the map. And there we go. The lad wants to blow up the bomb and thus eliminate the town. Option number two for power of the atom. I have in my possession a fusion pulse charge, constructed for a singular purpose. The detonation of that bomb. You'll rig it to the bomb, then you'll get paid. Handsomely. What do you say? And here we flipping go. Obviously I can try and speech check him for an extra 500. He does pay double what Lucas Sims will pay. He goes up to 500 if you pass the speech check. Mr. Burke, he can go up all the way to 1,000. Though, to be honest, 500 caps in the grand scheme of things is not worth losing all the good stuff you can get in Megaton. But um, I've got another solution anyway. Let's just say there's a reason... I took Black Widow. Color me intrigued. Go on. Ah, you see. Now who's the enthralled one now, Mr. Burke? And uh, yes, indeed. I can just get the 500 extra caps nice and easy. Don't need to worry about the speech check. But, 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 but. The more interesting option, to my mind, is basically a way of peacefully talking him down. Well, I, I mean, I, of course not. <laughs> I must admit, I've never met a woman quite like you before. This changes everything. I'm not sure what I'm going to tell Tenpenny. I'll think of something. You wait here, my dear. I have some important business to attend to. But you won't be waiting long. I shall send for you soon. And off he goes. Mr. Burke has been neutralised. He no longer wants to blow up Megaton. Now, I'm aware, by doing it this way, I am giving up access to some rather fun toys. If we just quickly step into an alternate parallel universe, of course, play along with him, hand the pulse charge straight over to Lucas Simza, and then you get a bit of a showdown. One where, if you just let it play outright, you can end up with a rather nice selection of gear. I'm placing you under arrest, Burke. At least until I figure out what the hell's going on around here. And I'm afraid I won't be able to oblige your request, Sheriff. I have pressing matters to attend to. Now, step aside. This isn't open to discussion. You're coming with me. Why do you knuckle-draggers always insist on doing things the hard way? Very well, Sheriff. Lead the way. So, Sheriff turns his back, gets immediately shot, there we go, and... No, no, Mr. Berg, I'm afraid you're not getting away that easily. Let's just very quickly take him out too. If we're lucky, a few crits, given, you know, have got a lot of luck going on. There's one critical strike. Not enough to kill him, though, so just very quickly. There you go, job done. Both of them dead, no one minds, he's not aligned with Megaton. And as a result of that, 
One, get myself at silence 10mm. Pretty bad in the original Fallout 3, because 10mm are pretty bad in the original Fallout 3. But yeah, this is a weird hybrid 10mm. The T's are slightly better than the Fallout 3 version, but not as good as the New Vegas one. But still, much better than it used to be. And the Dead Sheriff, meanwhile, gets me, yes, a very nice early game Chinese assault rifle. Fun fact number two, by the way, though the key you can get off Lucas Sims's body is listed as his house key, so you'd think it would just open his house, that's actually a lie. It does do that, but on top of that, it also works on the armory, normally very hard locked. So you can get this key and use that to break it here. Though, yes, unfortunately, it is also guarded by... Deputy Steel, who is very likely to be able to kill you at low levels uh, on a high difficulty. What's in here isn't even that good. Uh, there are some guns uh, that you wouldn't normally have access to at this point, but they're pretty low condition. It's just not really worth the trouble breaking into the armory. Not least as yes, that very much will happen at lower levels. Mr. Gutsy's not to be sniffed at. No, no, no. Let's nip back into our proper universe. One where Mr. Burke is walking out with love in his heart. And that is not just a cute voice line indicating, hey, the situation has been resolved. Mr. Burke now loves you. In fact, he now loves you possibly more than any character loves any other character in the entire Fallout franchise. He is now going to go away and rethink his life, doing whatever it takes to bring you two together. But it's really easy to miss because uh, plenty of people, once they're done with, you know, the very early game stuff, never really come back to Moriarty's saloon. But if we do, some rather interesting stuff might happen in the future. Though it might take a bit of time to occur. So, okay, we're going to be coming back here later. But yes, the wonderful love story of Wanda and Mr. Burke is only just beginning. Still, back down to the bomb, and now we've dealt with Mr. Burke, we should be able to just deal with this. So, okay, disarm bomb. Turns out I'm very good at disarming bombs. So, okay, I would now like 500 caps for that five seconds of work, please. I'll be damned. You did it, didn't you? You disarmed that thing. Here's your reward. Hell, why don't you move in? Could use someone like you. Got an empty place here you can use. Here's the key indeed. It ain't much to look at, but talk with Moira. She's got random odds and ends you might be able to spruce the place up with. And there we flip it. Go, get a giant pile of money and a free bloody house for just walking up to a bomb and tinkering with a wire or two. Mag bloody nificence. And if we just step out of that conversation, a brilliant up to level 3. Want to get lockpicked straight up to 25, just so I can cover all the various easy checks. Brilliant. Yes, speech is most definitely not good enough for the time being. So how about we just, uh, yeah, boost that just the slightest amount. And I'm guessing we are indeed playing by New Vegas rules. So perk once every two levels, not every level. Brilliant. And there we go. Got my own house now. Oh, and a free robot who provides me with purified water when we're playing a hardcore mode. So just to clarify, ran down the road, pushed one button on a bomb, fixed it, got 500 caps, a house, and a robot. Magnificent. Arguably suspiciously generous. And if we just speak to him, there we go. Purified water. Certainly, madam. And he can give you, I think it's, um, yeah, several a day. What's the limit Certainly, here? Madam. Up to four. Keep going. Certainly, madam. That's five. I'm sorry. And well, there I'm we go. So I think it's five at purified waters a day. This, by the way, completely breaks the game's karma system. This is why, yes, basically, if you come to a major choice in this game, it's probably best to go for the evil option, especially if you want to maintain neutral karma and thus avoid being hunted down by one or the other faction of mercenaries. And that's thanks to this lovely lad here, Mickey. Oh, Mickey's amazing. So yes, Mickey over here is one of the water beggars just outside town. He's thirsty, he's dying, he needs purified water, and if you hand him one... Thank you. Thank you so much. You've saved my life. Bless you. Now that is worth karma. Quite a lot of it, actually. 
50 karma in one go. Bearing in mind the entire karma spectrum is only minus 1,000 to plus 1,000. And that is 50 right there. And the robot just gave me five purified waters in one go. And back in the house, of course, we also get a free bobblehead collector stand. So right now we've only got medicine, but screw it. There's gonna be plenty more to come, I'm sure. Speaking of which, actually, now that I've dealt with that bomb situation, my new best friend, Lucas Sims, doesn't mind me going into his house any time of day or night. So just run straight in because... Hang on, which room is it in? Just ignore you, don't mind that, teaser. There we go, one bobblehead, beautiful. So yes, just like before, these bobbleheads no longer just increase special or skill points because there's more than enough special and skill points floating around. So okay, 25 pounds more gear, not bad, not bad at all. And uh, while we're in Lucas Sim's house, very easy to miss by the way, the lad's got a trap door that leads up to his roof. And this is the easiest way to get to this town's secret area, which is, uh, as you're entering, you may have noticed right at the start, yes, there's a sniper. His name's Stockholm. You're not supposed to be able to get up to him, but if you use the roof of this here building, it's just about possible. Because, you see, it's pretty easy just to uh, hop your way up to the top of the large old crashed aeroplane that makes up this house, indeed the vast majority of Megaton. And then it's just a question of getting yourself into just the right position at the rear of the roof. Because right here on the slope, I can't jump. But this ledge right here, if you just get yourself onto that, standing on that ledge, you are allowed to jump. Which is basically what you need to do. Though you will fall off and die a few times. This is not easy. There we go. Got it this time. Though yeah, it's pretty hard just to even stay on this. The reason we want to be here, by the way, is because yes, now basically I need to jump from here over to Invisible Wall. You can see I'm really not supposed to be here. The rest of the world isn't even loaded to get over to that bit of whatever it is, like broken metal of some description. Oh, there we go. Got it. Took many, many attempts. We've made it from the roof over to the rear of this area. Then we can just follow this around. And if we are lucky, come on, hitboxers, work with me here. There we go. Got it. Problem ultimately solved using the classic Bethesda solution of a hammer the jump button until the physics and or level geometry breaks. So, yeah. And if you get up here, Bethesda did kind of, you know, keep it vaguely in mind, people would probably find a way. The more time I spend talking to you, the less I'm spending watching for raiders. How the hell did you get up here anyway? Yes, indeed. Stockholm actually has a recorded voice line ready for any player who somehow managed to get up here, even though they're not really supposed to. And uh, yes, you can just uh, see from up here. Rest of the world doesn't really exist, by the way. So probably best we just get away from this terrifying nightmare cursed balcony. Okay, bomber disarmed, rules of physics violated. I'd say I deserve a good night's sleep in my very own house. Not least as, yes, next indeed, supply. We need to go check out Moira because, well, Lucas Sims told us to go and do said thing. And I see no reason why we shouldn't because that's going to kick off one of my favorite missions in the entire Fallout franchise of all time. The Wasteland Survival Guide, which is just, oh, it's beautiful. Let's, uh, yes, dive in and say hi to Moira. Hey, I hear you're that stray from the vault. Oh, I haven't seen one of you for years. Good to meet you. I'm Moira Brown. I run Craterside Supply. But what I really do is mostly tinkering and research. Say, I'm working on a book about the wasteland. It'd be great to have the foreword by a vault dweller. Help me out, would you? I love Moira. I love her so much. And yes, indeed, I was a bit silly last episode to spend a fair bit of money buying leather armor when Moira's gonna hand over the Volt suit right now for free, and it's probably gonna be better than, yeah, whatever I'm wearing right now. Great. Just tell me what it's like to live underground all your life, or, or to come outside for the first time, or whatever strikes your fancy. Moira, it is 
an incredible experience. You step out into the world for the first time, the light blinds you, the silhouette of the city in the distance slowly coming into focus, the music swells, and then all the DLC pop-ups occur. It does somewhat take you out of the moment, yes. So, that gets me the vault suit, and on top of that, yes indeed. Wasteland Survival Guide, let's go. Now, I think the first chapter will have to be about surviving day-to-day -day dangers. Things like where it is and isn't safe to find food, the dangers of radiation, and how to avoid and even profit from dangerous landmines. Naturally, of course, yes. By far the easiest, and in some ways the most interesting, is radiation. Well, that's what I need your help for, isn't it? I know lots about it from books, but I never seem to get a live example. Not for long, anyway. So I need you to get a bit of radiation poisoning, so I can study its effects. Oh, not a deadly dose, of course. I can fix you up before that. Now, 200 rads should be enough for basic sickness. But if you can get 600 or more rads, my test will be even more accurate. Just make sure you can get back here, and I'll see to it that you're well taken care of. And this here is why I love this mission so bloody much. Because the reward is a perk. And let's be honest, more missions should have perks as a reward. Because perks are way more interesting than just a bit of money or a new piece of equipment. Perks are great, perks are fun. But what I love about this particular perk is, I think it's the most flexible and variable perk in the entire Fallout franchise. You don't just get a perk for completing the mission. You get a variant of the perk depending on how you approach the mission she gave you. So 200 or 600, you just saw on screen a second ago, obviously 200 is enough to move on, but 600, that moves you towards getting a better perk at the end of things. And that's not the only variant going either. Okay, nip down to the bomb water. Perfect timing. I was getting a bit thirsty anyway, so just drink up and we are moving in a very good direction there. Lovely. No longer thirsty in the slightest. Little bit irradiated, but that's fine. While we're just uh, drinking up, by the way, fun thing about this mission, you don't actually need to do it. Like several of Moira's missions, uh, you can just bypass it with the right skill check. So, if your science is good enough, I believe it is 50 on this occasion, you can just tell her, hey, I understand radiation, I'll just tell you about it. And not only does that pass the mission, it counts as the advanced pass, i.e. the equivalent of coming back with 600 rads. Though, to my mind, it's not worth doing because you miss out on something rather cool. Oh, feeling a bit under the weather? Or a bit over the Geiger counter? <laughs> And yes, indeed, I'm feeling a bit irradiated. If we do this, we get an extra thing from her. I can tell. You're positively glowing. Now, just hold on and try not to move. Tell me how it feels, and I'll get you fixed right up. And here's the other variant as well. So the perk you get at the end of this mission basically lives on a grit. On one axis, you've got how well you completed the missions. Did you do the optional objectives? Yes or no? And some of them are kind of fun and interesting. Reminds me a bit of, uh, yes, the Dark Brotherhood in Oblivion. On the other axis, however, you've got how you report the data to her. So, yes, right now I've only got two options, because my special isn't that impressive at the minute. So, just do your examination and fix me up. That is normal. If I just respond to her normally, at the end of the day, the perk is going to give me a bit of bonus health. However, option at the bottom, that's the snide option, basically being a sarcastic bastard. And that, to my mind, is the one I want. Because I am a Hylock builder that took built to destroy. I am going to be all about the crits. And if you just give her all the snide answers, at the end of the day, the perks are going to be about your crit rate. With the more optional objectives you do, representing a higher and a higher gain to your crit rate. It's just... It's just a lovely mission. Okay. A little Brahmin milk, a couple magnets, and maybe a few happy thoughts. Well, you're alive! Oh, that's the good news. But there was a little side effect. A teeny tiny, um, mutation. Uh, but it seems to be benign, at least. Here, take a few radiation chems, as my little way of saying, I'm sorry I twisted your DNA like a kitten with a ball of yarn. 
And there we go. I just get myself a brand new bloody perk and it's actually a good one. So when I'm suffering advanced radiation poisoning, crippled limbs are automatically heal, which in hardcore mode is actually rather useful. And I'd say yes. Next up, how about the super duper mark? That old classic. Oh, great. Food is most important, but see if you can get medicine too. And if there's nothing to find, then just come back in one piece, okay? So, today, main objective, find food, medicine, that's the optional. Though, yes indeed, we will be trying to do both. Though before we head off, yes, Moira is also a shop. Not the most spectacular shop in terms of, uh, yes, weapons or apparel, but couple of fun surprises, I'd forgotten this was going to be a thing. Yes indeed, ammo. We have got hollow point rounds, we have got, oh blimey. Okay, the special ammo. Now that's, that's pretty good, because, uh, yeah, against creatures with no damage resistance and no damage threshold either, hollow point rounds are going to be spectacular. Hot plates. By any chance, is that how I cook food? Because, uh, gonna be honest, I'm aware I'm in a uh, hardcore mode, hadn't actually located uh, anywhere I can cook all the food I'm carrying around, given, uh, you know, I was bringing an awful lot of rad roach meat out of the vault, and uh, right now, can't cook the stuff, so uh, it is a lot of money, but I feel like I might just be uh, needing that, and yes, we need to save up for the rest of this, some of this actually generates skill books for you if that's what you want, although this is going to, yes, put me a bit behind for the rocket launcher, which I do most definitely want, but I feel like I need the ability to cook food. Like, that'd be good. So, okay. 1,177 caps needed. I think we can put that together, you know. And back in my house. Hot plate. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, um, fun fact. Apparently, this isn't Fallout 4. So, um... I don't actually know how to cook flipping, yes, rad roach. Ah, yes I do, I just need a terrifyingly large amount of dirty water. Well that's bloody useless, the robot only makes the good pure stuff. Okay, hit up every bar in town for all their dirty water. You know what, three will do for the time being. So yeah, the raw meat is food minus 40, tiny bit of healing, rads plus 9. This is still rads but only 4. Healing's the same, but it does help out in terms of, yeah, water and food. Not bad, not bad at all. So okay, right now we are... You know what? I wouldn't mind some of that immediately. Love it. Though I do also have... Oh dear, junk food does not do much apparently. Well, it's good enough for now. Still, there's plenty of ways to make plenty of money in this town. Some of them honest. Not many, actually. Most of them dishonest, now I think about it. Step one, the brass lantern. I wish I had a nicer way of saying this, but we're just going to rob them. Because inside this safe in the back room, that's their entire life savings. And it's very hard locked. But the brass lectern terminal is most certainly not. So we can unlock the floor safe. Brilliant. But on top of that, we've got a hint about one of the smaller missions. So yes, indeed. Leo stealing. We don't know where the money's going. And Doc Church seems to know something, but he won't tell me. So we'll be following up on that in a moment. So safe open. Grab 300 caps, flip in and love it, and then just walk out, and nobody's the wiser. And as it just came up, yes indeed, just nip over to have a chat with Doc Church about Leo. Although unfortunately, yes, I think you need a speech check or a good medicine to get him on side and open up about Leo. So we might get lucky for some free XP. Yeah, sorry. I don't think so. Nope, not on this occasion, so fortunately, there are other solutions. In particular, just nip into the back room, and that's a broken terminal. I know there's a working one somewhere. Ah, hang on, no there's not, I'm misremembering, though. While I'm here, as you refuse to be, you know, talked round, I am going to steal every stim pack that's not nailed down. 
Also, I'm going to be honest, Doctor, I'm not 100% convinced some of your patients are going to make it. Yes, it's definitely Moriarty's saloon that's actually got the information I need. He actually has, yes, all the dirt on everybody. So let's do this old spy like just to crack in at the back door. Nobody in here. Brilliant. Unfortunately, ooh, terminal is 50. The cabinet, however, that's a nice easy one. Anyone could do that. That gets me the password. Rob him too. I do need money after all. And now, straight over to the terminal. Now, we could also at this point, yes, get our information as to, uh, yes, James in the visitors tab. We know about my dad thanks to that. But no, 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 no. Leo Stall. That's what we want. And it turns out the lad's got a drug problem. Precisely why Doc Church wouldn't say anything. He's presumably treating it. And with that information in hand, Leo, me and you need to have a chat. Well, goddamn. You're new, right? Name's Leo Stahl. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Okay, the lad's in, uh, yes, a good mood at the moment. Also, is his beard purple? Because I swear his beard is purple. Right, buddy. Let's talk about getting you off the drugs, because you are robbing your brother to pay for your habit. And that's not cool. Damn it. Who told you I... I mean, I have no idea what you're talking about. And don't worry, buddy. I want to help. Now, admittedly, I could actually, uh, yes, try and at this point blackmail him for money, but that would be wrong. We're going to help him. Help? What's to help? So I'm a junkie. Big fucking deal. It's not like I'm hurting anyone. And, oh yeah, 71%. I... I guess you're right. I have to tell them about my problem, don't I? And there we go. That would be a good first step right there, Leo. Let's make amends and get you on a better path. I just don't know what to say. I've been stealing from both of them for years to get my fix. Where do I even start? Well, I'll figure something out. Look, I want to thank you for your help. I guess it took a complete stranger to show me what an ass I've been. Take this key. It's to my private stash in the water treatment plant. Just get rid of the stuff. Burn it, sell it. I don't care what happens to it. And all right. Sell it, you say? Well, that's just bloody perfect. And on top of that, handful of XP. I love this mission, by the way, because it doesn't actually exist in the Pip-Boy at all. So it's so easy to miss because it's not one of the big main missions. But there's a bit to it. You could go and investigate it with the doctor or the local bar owner who's got the dirt on anybody. There's a few other people you could speak to as well. Yeah, it's just a fun little mission that exists in this really densely packed area. So, up to the water treatment plant, as he said, and the stash is actually really not bad at all. And not just the stash, but also the money he stole. Together with, oh yeah, all sorts of useful bits and pieces. Plenty of this we could just sell. Just, oh yeah, look at that. Even super stim packs too. And while I'm up at the water treatment plant. Okay, Walter, I'm guessing you want me to do something about the various leaks around town. Another easy bit of, uh, yes, beautiful, beautiful XP and money for doing all this. Just head down to Crater Side at Supply. Best point to, uh, yeah, hop over would be about here. This is the hardest one to get to, so... Okay, repair of 30. I'm pretty sure I can arrange that. I kept the utility jumpsuit for precisely this reason. Then it gets repaired to 26. Perfect. Then we just do... Yeah. Some Mentats ought to do the job, so there we go. Just immediately using that beautiful, beautiful stash to my advantage. I didn't plan this, but it has worked out perfectly. So sort that out. If we can do all of this on a single Mentats, that would be brilliant. So just get all of this done. Nice and simple. And the last one. Job done on a single Mentats. Magnificent. So... That there, that's Walter Happy, and there's more we can do with him yet as well. I'll give you caps for any scrap metal you can bring me. You'll find it all over the place out there in the waste. 
If I have a steady supply of scrap, I can keep the plant running and the pipe should be just fine. We got a deal? Absolutely. And yes, indeed. I will want paying, by the way. Because, yeah, you can either get karma or you can get caps. But as we've established, there is no shortage of karma in this game. All right, all right, relax. But all you've done is delay the inevitable. Without those parts, the plant's going to croak sooner or later. But what do you care? You just want your money. Here, take it and get out. I'm so sorry, that was a misunderstanding. What I actually meant was I want to be paid for the scrap metal I bring you, which I've got some of right now. But okay, I'm really sorry, Walter. That, that, that was wrong of me. And I'm pretty sure the game just gave me the reward for, yes, fixing the pipes twice. Because I said no, and thus had to go through the conversation again. So, okay, fascinating. I tell you what, let's take a little bit of barter. I wouldn't mind just the slightest bit of barter, just to, you know, keep things nice and cheap in the shops. And a tiny bit of speech. I just enjoy round numbers, okay? Round numbers make me happy. And 33 may not be a round number, but it kind of feels like an honorary round number, given, you know, it's basically a third. And oh bloody hell, the number of perks is starting to get bananas. I love it. So Scoundrel is now, yeah, 10% discount in every shop and uh, more XP for speech checks. Honestly, XP boosting we do not need. Educated, two more skill points. So again, I feel like we've got plenty of skill points. I think we're fine. Comprehension though, that's never going to hurt. Yeah, go on. I'll take some comprehension right now. Okay, put all that together and yes, nip back to Moriarty's saloon because he's got a tiny mission for me too. Because of course, yes, Moriarty wants money for my father's location. Don't need to actually pay him given I could just get out the terminal that's around the back over there. No trouble whatsoever. But I wouldn't mind, yes, playing along simply because... If I do, he'll give me a job where there's plenty of money available. This junky bitch named Silver borrowed quite a few caps from me. Claimed she could start funneling Jet and Psycho to me for a good price. Problem is, she scrammed with the loot and set herself up in Springvale so she can inject herself into a stupor. Get the caps she owes me and they're yours. Yours to pay me with, anyway. <laughs> and that there's perfect, because I don't need to give him the caps so they can just be mine. Right, out we go into the wild and... Uh, okay, who's the trader today? And it's... Oh, it's Crow again. Okay, slightly underwhelming given he was just here a minute ago. But, obviously, before we head over to uh, Springvale, one thing that I would like to check out if we just uh, head in this direction, up this side of the town, I'm sure some of you will know precisely where I'm going immediately. Right, handful of mole rats needs to go down. Ooh, lovely mid-air shot there. Love a mid-air shot. Just take you out, buddy. Bear in mind, Vance defense is not as good as it used to be. Like, it is ridiculously high in Fallout 3. It's been toned back quite a lot. So just be aware and... Oh, yeah. Love that iron side taming. Yeah, you better run. Gotta love Vance in Fallout 3. Just somehow, it felt more visceral and brutal than other vats and this rock right here you can tell it's the right rock because of all the trees uh, one hollowed out rock magnificent and uh, here we go uh, sniper rifle obviously very very strong indeed uh, but with the downside that uh yes now we're playing by new vegas rules uh, it might be a little bit harder to use than you might expect oh yeah small gun 75 uh, strength of at six I don't meet either of those, uh, so I'm guessing. Okay, there's a bit of sway. Honestly, I was expecting... Why am I in caution? Is there a mole rat I've missed or something? Hang about. I don't see anything. But yes, bare minimum, I do have a sniping weapon. So it's better than nothing. Oh, and hello, sexy. Okay, as part of the uh, blending of worlds and, of course, the addition of hardcore mode, uh, I'm guessing... Okay, various plants you can actually pick the fruit of have been added into Fallout 3. Fair enough, I suppose. Okay, back round the corner to uh, Springvale. We've got ourselves Silver's house right over here. Who the hell are you? Where'd you come from? Did Moriarty send you? 
Okay, Silver might be a little bit on the uh, paranoid side. Not that she's wrong, mind, and uh, yes, indeed. All right, he says uh, you owe him caps. That bastard. He's a... he's a liar. He just wants me dead. Those caps are all mine. I earned them. And uh, okay, with a speech check, 50-50, I can get all the caps right now. So, okay, coin flip. I'm tired of hiding out here like some kind of wasteland dog. I, I guess you're right. Here, this is all I have. Please leave me alone now. All right, there we go. If you just, yes, play along and be nice, you can get 300 caps, but she keeps 100 on her. Speech check is the only way to actually get, uh, yes, all 400. And while I'm here, I will most definitely be, uh, yes, helping myself to all of her stuff. And uh, I'm going to be honest, under this rule set, her potatoes are a lot more interesting than they would be otherwise. Okay, a tiny bit less than previously advertised at the schematic for the rocket launcher. Don't forget, by the way, to trade out some of the drugs. We definitely don't need all of this. Okay, that gets me down to 258. And that's a good amount of change to have. Because she's actually selling everything I need to make the rocket launcher. Nice and easy for 100 caps. And here we flipping go... One rocket launcher. Okay, do you want to hear something absolutely hilarious? Which is, after all that effort to get together all that money, Tale of Two Wastelands is very unhappy with me. Alright, if I move the cursor down to the rocket launcher, crash to desktop. Now, a quick glance online, when I say quick, I mean the last hour, suggests something something bashed patch, um, plug-in limit... I don't know how to fix it. Look, I'll try and fix this for next week, but for the time being, we can't use the rocket launcher. Or look at it. So, okay, for the time being, we're just going to store the stuff to make the rocket launcher right here to save on weight. Also, am I going bananas? I swear this locker in Fallout 3 is right here by the door and not on the wall. I may be going bananas, I'm not sure. So, out into the wasteland, and yes, maybe slightly less well-armed than I'd like to be. Rocket Launcher is useful for giving you a bit of punch in the early game, but we'll do without. I'm sure it's going to be fine, and uh, on our way to the Super Duper Mart, we're going to be running into one of my favourite features of the Fallout 3 Wasteland. Because yes, at various points on the map, you just run into stuff, and you don't know what it's going to be. You could get very lucky, and it's just a friendly person who wants to give you a hug and some free ammo. You could be very unlucky, and it turns out to be something that's going to completely destroy you, because plenty of a very elite stuff can show up at a very, very low level. But on the other, other hand, sometimes you can get lucky and find some really good gear really early on. It is chaotic and nonsensical and slightly buggy and broken, but screw it. I'm playing a Bethesda game. That's what I signed up for. So what we're coming up on at first is, yes, what we call a Type B encounter. The more dangerous and arguably interesting chaotic kind where rather than there just being you know something standing in the middle of the road there's going to be something patrolling in this area it could be an absolute nightmare it could be as i say a new best friend so just keep your eyes open maybe stay down until you know what it's going to be someone just detects me and i'm not in danger just don't forget the books at all random wastelander Appears to have a tire iron. Is... Oh. Excuse me. Are you okay? There's nothing here. There's nothing here, she says. Okay, there's also... Uh-oh. Oh, it's Sam Warwick. Okay, Sam Warwick is a dick. And he's significantly better armed than me. So, we're going to be wanting to use uh, some cover against... Oh, blimey. Yep, you see. Definitely going to be wanting uh, some cover. Okay, I want Sam Warwick to be... Uh, very nearby to me before I uh, engage him at all. But I would like to, uh, yes, just use uh, this cover to my advantage and go. 
that's okay, Sam. Because this is... Oh, I've got a good shot at the head right here. He's got a good sniper rifle. But if I get lucky, he might, yes, uh, get staggered. But now I'm going to miss the head a few times, unfortunately. Okay, that's... Uh, this is less good, actually. No, no, no. Okay, this is... This is... This is... This is where, yes, things can get a bit wrong. Also, I'm playing in a hardcore mode. So, I can't actually instantaneously heal. What I can do is eat a lot of mashed potato and cram maybe like you know a little drink of water will make me feel a bit on the better side my action points are in good shape and point blank range okay my action points are mostly back his head's crippled i'd say let's disarm him take out the rifle one two no more rifle for you buddy except he just put the rifle away Possibly because it broke. Okay. Now, 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 now. Oh, no, he doesn't have a leg. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'd better run. You'd better run, Sam Warwick. And he's he's pulled out the rifle again. That's quite frankly cheating. Okay, he put it away for some reason. I don't know why. This arm's the best shot I've got. Go for it. One, two, and... Okay, now he's definitely lost the rifle. And now he's going to go for it. No, you don't. Okay. Sam Warwick is dead. I'm still in caution. The rifle is in. Yeah, that's basically just spare parts, but that's fine. And that gets me... Road Rascal Leather Jacket. So yeah, the armored jumpsuit is 8 to 12. This is... 5... But 24. So against, yes, light fire, the suit's going to be way, way better. The leather will be much more effective against, yes, a powerful single enemy. And I tell you what... I'm putting on the sunglasses to celebrate my victory over this loser. Right, pop a couple of stem packs, get some healing going on. So yes, indeed, that was a B-type event. Over at the Super Duper Mart, however, there's going to be a Type A event. That's a more static one, where things just sort of appear in a fixed location, and the event broadly doesn't chase you down and murder you, which Type B events do. So yes, now we're going into a second event, but... I just really like this system because it just adds so much unpredictability and chaos to the wastelands. And I feel like that's how Fallout wastelands should be. They should be chaotic and dumb and ridiculous. So I feel like it's very appropriate. Okay, we're getting closer and... I am seeing... Well, I'm seeing Chinese radio signal. That might mean... I see raiders, but I think they're just supposed to be here. There's also an eye. But, hang about, possibly the random event was, uh, yes, something generating that signal. So, okay, just keep a distance, actually, because, yeah, I see you guys there, but you should be a fairly easy, say a fairly easy hit. Go for the leg and the arm and whatnot. We'll see what we can do. We're doing a bit of light damage. I think we actually hit the gun by accident there. You've definitely taken a few knocks. Now you're in bad shape, actually. You're trying to just punch me, aren't you? And no, you're not. You're trying to run away. Well, no, no running away for you, please. There we go. Yep, dead Chinese commando. So on this occasion, it wasn't so much an enemy or a friend as a note of law. So let's just get up to this guy. I'm pretty sure you're just using a basic hunting rifle. Right there. Lovely crit. Gotta love my luck build. Take you out, buddy. And in just a second, he's still more interested in the robot than me. And no, no, he's dead. I was on your side, you stupid. Okay, fine. You know what? I want to be friends. Still, I will not say no to the dead Chinese commando because, yeah, that's a good amount of uh, ammo right there. That is not a bad sword either. And a perception boosting a hat. Lovely. The jumpsuit, however, is, yeah, not very good. Got medicine on him. I'll take the gun. Sell all that. That's going to be some good money to make up for the rocket launcher that I can't use because otherwise New Vegas falls apart and cries. Right, into the main event. Sniper rifle that I cannot possibly use versus raiders. Let's go. Just wait for somebody to hold still. And also wait for my randomly flickering sights to actually be lined up with something. And go! Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh yeah. Now that. That's the stuff right there. And nobody noticed that. All right, I am a flipping... Never mind, somebody noticed that. Okay, just, just back up for a second. Good, they've got over it. Brilliant. And no, no, they haven't. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. 
I missed that guy. No, I didn't. His leg is crippled. This is a waste of really good ammo, by the way, but screw it. I've got a good sniper rifle. I'm going to use it and then take you out. And seriously, you just need to please stop not dying. Down he goes. Arm falls off. Lovely. Okay. Gonna be a few more yet, but not too many. Just yet. Like, yeah. Initial stages in the Super Duper Mart. Shouldn't be too bad at all. Let's just clear out to the side. If such a thing needs doing. I see you, buddy. Right. Let's see if we can just take you up. Oh, yeah. At this range, head, no problem. We should be able to get the odd crit if we're lucky. And that should be boom. Oh, I love it when the body just drops out from under them. It's just very classy. Very stylish. I should probably actually take... Well, I could put the helmet on. But if I do that, I don't wear the sunglasses. They kind of, you know, mark my incredible victory against Sam Warwick and... Uh, you know what? That looks pretty badass right there. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I'm seeing only one person on the lovely compass. Use these shelves to get up to you. No! Ow! That hurt a bit. We still got a good shot at you, buddy. We should have a decent-ish shot. Oh, yeah, good. We're hitting him over the... No, please stop shooting him while he's bending over. That's literally the opposite of... Oh, he's got a, he's got a shotgun, hasn't he? That's a double-barreled shotgun. Let him fire it. Let him fire it at range. It's cocking useless. Just get over to here and where is he? He's over there. That's absolutely fine. Should be able to get some good hits on the legs. There's a couple of hits right there. Screw you, buddy. Yeah, this range shotguns are nothing. Caution. Someone else is vaguely aware as to what's going on. Probably nope. Back to where he should be. Okay, he's in here. Whoever it is, they're right here. Have I got anything else that's, you know, better? At this point. I mean I've got a baseball bat. Which does actually do. Yes. Better damage. And also a sword. Then again. Okay the base damage of that is not so good. Let's just go over to the old. Baseball bats. Okay you know what. If we can get nice and nearby to them. Here we go. 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 We're nice and nearby to you. And go. Okay you've also got a knife. This doesn't look very impressive, but if we get a good crit, it'll be fine. I'm getting the hits in with the vats. It's all going to be... Okay, you know what? This this was a terrible mistake. Also, there's more of them now. There's, there's more of them at this point. This was... Okay, this was a bad idea in general. Should have just stuck with, you know, the, the, the gun thing. The thing that fires bullets. So that's all absolutely fine. I think actually some of you guys are... This is all a-okay. We can take you out. For some reason, you're a bit tougher than your friend. There's those crits I was after. Now your head pops off. Brilliant. Now we just hop over because, hey, I bet you don't know how to jump, do you? Oh, the bane of all Bethesda enemies. They've no idea how to... Do you have a power fist? No, you've got a cleaver. It was just inside a wall. That's that's all absolutely fine in that case. Okay, I think we're about done with, yes, the raiders in this starting area. And admittedly, yes, I'm very disappointed the rocket launcher isn't going to work. Because my genius plan was uh, loot this place. Just consider all the bent cans. Uh, and then consider all the beautiful, beautiful checkout kiosks over here. Alright, that's pre-war money. That's literally weightless. Still, crucially, at the front of the store, the easy first objective, uh, the food storage. Take all of that. Beautiful. So there we go. I have located food. But more importantly, no, 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 no. Don't worry about any of the rest of it yet. Now we need to, uh, yes, go and get ourselves uh, some lovely, lovely medicine. Okay, can't open the door. Can I handle this thing at least? Right, crack you open. And yes, indeed, uh, oh, robot friend, uh, I love you. So don't touch the pharmacy supplies yet. That's going to spawn some, uh, yes, not super friendly people. Before we do that, make sure we're done looting. There is medicine, there is drugs, and there's a ton of quantum. Beautiful. We're back. Somebody open up the... Oh, hang on. Never mind. The trigger was not what I thought it was. Okay, hang about. We need to, uh, yes, sort out the, uh, 
the robot, though, before we do that, take the ID. Otherwise, the robot will think I'm an enemy, too. Okay, time to get the robot running. But do you want to know something really fun about, uh, yes, robots in Fallout 3 versus Fallout New Vegas? Well, one, mysterious, yes, there's barely any Protectrons. Fallout 3, they're everywhere. But in New Vegas, they're much better. Fallout 3, they've got no armor whatsoever. Fallout New Vegas, they all come with 8DT, which is not nothing. In short, this robot should do much better than he might do normally. Also, don't forget to pick up the pharmacy supplies while I'm literally passing by. There we go. Both objectives are completed. He heads out into the world. He starts detecting there might be problems nearby. I'm pretty sure I just saw one such problem over here. Possibly, possibly not. He's shooting at something. Okay, someone's shooting it. Oh, buddy. Excuse me. That is my... Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, the giblets in Fallout 3. They were beautiful. Yeah, look at that. He took so little damage because he has got so much armor. And you, buddy, you were using a shotgun. Well, that, that was just a terrible idea on your part, to be honest, Jazz. Right, take all this. It's all going to be fine. And yes, potentially I could just sneak out of here. Like, no one says I had to kill every single raider that showed up, though. To be honest, this guy's being pretty chill. Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I see one more. It's just... You were supposed to hold still so I could pop your head off, dear oh flipping dear. Right, I think we've got one more over in that direction. So, robot friend, this one's all yours. I've just led her straight at you. If you wouldn't mind going and uh, helping me out a bit. Area secure. Robot friend, you had one job. Oh, there we go. We found her. So, she is right by the door. Robot is just doing his own thing. Attempting to take her out very slowly and badly. There we go, lovely. Ah, oh, beautiful melting there too. Good job. Okay, step one. Yes, make some of my money back, given Moira just basically ripped me off with a rocket launcher schematic so defective it broke New Vegas. And with cash in hand, got the food and the medicine. Really? You did? You did? Well, all right. Tell me all about it. So, that's a successful completion, and yes, indeed. This time I've got the intelligence check available, but I don't want to do that. No, no, no. The bottom answer is always what the game calls a snide. That's what we're going to be going for. Commit to the snides. Well, as long as it was no problem for you then. I mean, who doesn't enjoy cake? Other than robots, of course. I bet they prefer pie. Huh. Or maybe pie. <laughs> oh, and take this. It's an old food sanitizer. Just carry it with you, and it should automatically make most food and drink more... better. All right, and she's not kidding. The food sanitizer, especially under hardcore rules, is actually pretty good. Just makes all food and drink 20% better in terms of the healing it provides. And of course, yes, there's only one thing left for this chapter, landmines. But that is a lot further afield. Still, we're home. We've got a brand new bobblehead. My robot is... Stop hiding upstairs, you. Welcome home, madam. Still, I would say that is more than enough for now. But next time, oh, we are going much deeper out into the chaos. Because today we went on a stroll from Springvale over to the Super Duper Mart. Next time, oh, we are going all the way up to Minefield. And there is a lot of stuff between me and... And there. Still, if we are very lucky indeed, I might be able to get the rocket launcher fixed for next week. And there might just be a letter waiting for us from the very much smitten Mr. Burke. So, plenty of stuff to come. Hopefully, you are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rat scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.